This is an I Am Listening original podcast. There's loads of options. Generally at college, you'll focus on just one subject. So if any of you are thinking about going to sixth form, you'll know that you have to pick like three or four subjects. But if there's one thing that you are really, really interested in, college can be really good for that because you can just pick one and run with it. Welcome to the Hit List GCSE Surgery Podcast with East Kent Colleges Group from EKC Canterbury College, hosted by me, Numi Gildert. I'm joined by a panel of education experts as well as students, and we're going to be giving you advice on what's next and also what you can expect in your next step of your education journey. In this episode, we're talking about what your options are after you get your GCSE results and the different educational routes open to you. The Hit List GCSE Surgery with East Kent Colleges Group, a family of six community-based colleges. See where at ekcgroup.ac.uk. Good evening. You're listening to a very special version of The Hit List tonight. This is The Hit List GCSE Surgery with East Kent Colleges Group from EKC Canterbury College. GCSE results came out today. All your hard work has come to fruition. We want to start by saying whatever happened today, it is going to be fine. If you got what you expected, huge congratulations to you. And if they weren't quite what you wanted, or maybe even better, the plan for the show tonight is to delve deeper into the options you have in front of you uh, for what to do next. I'm joined by a panel of education experts as well as students. We're going to be giving you advice on your next steps, discussing what your options are, and also what you can expect in your next step in your education journey. We also have a totally student audience tonight. So no doubt we'll have some questions as we go too. So first off, I'm joined by Rachel, Taylor, and Holly. And we're going to just talk a little bit about the different options for people after GCSEs. One of the brilliant things now is there are so many options, but that can also feel a little bit daunting. So first off, I want to ask Rachel, a career advisor at Canterbury College, what are the main options for someone after GCSEs? Okay, so after they finish GCSEs, students can either stay at their, their sixth form, so they can stay at their own school and carry on in the sixth form, Or they might want to choose to go to a different environment, so they can apply to other schools, another sixth form, or to a college. At colleges, there are a range of different qualifications on offer. So one of those would be a traditional BTEC college course, where you focus on one subject. Another one would be T-levels, which are similar to BTECs, but include more work experience. And a third option at college would be A-levels, so they could pick three traditional A-levels in the same way as at school. And then aside from that, apprenticeships are a, an option outside of college, where they will be going to a training provider, may, might be in college, might be somewhere else. So a whole range of options at that stage. And how might someone, if they are looking post-GCSE for what they want to do, what could be the first step in narrowing down that option okay well it's good to look as early as you can open days are a good first stage so schools colleges all run open days throughout the year so that students can go and and have a look and have a feel for the place meet other students meet the staff see the facilities get a feel for it and see what they like and do some research online look up what's available what sort of subjects they might be interested in and talking to their tutors their teachers at school So I've also got Taylor, who is a recruitment officer for apprenticeships. What kind of questions would a prospective student should be asking themselves if they're looking to go into an apprenticeship? They've got to look at what they want to be doing. So knowing sort of future plans of what they want to do for their career, seeing potential employers, what they're doing sort of on a day to day basis, making sure it's what they want to be doing so that they're making the right choices for their future. And Holly, I'm going to ask, you are a student experience officer, what support is available for people wanting to explore their options post-GCSE? Okay, so at the college, we have an entire team of people dedicated to next steps and advice on what to study. 
so this is actually Rachel's room, but I, I believe you can call into the college beforehand and kind of talk about the different courses and your different options. We also have a bunch of open days throughout the year, and every department is open at those, so you're able to talk to tutors, you're able to talk to the students' union, uh, our wellbeing team, everything like that. What's your favourite thing about open days? Open days, I think it's really good that you can go into classes and you can talk to class teachers about what the course actually entails. I just think that's the most important part. Now that we've got a little bit more context about the options available after GCSE, let's talk about people receiving their results tonight. So it can obviously be a huge day. You've put in loads of work. It's very nerve-wracking. Maybe you didn't get the results that you're expecting. Maybe you got better than you're expecting. I want to ask Rachel, what advice do you have to handle those nerves that people might have felt today? Well, first of all, we'd all, we'd all say, try and not be nervous. But it's it's <laughs> easy, easy to say that, isn't it? Whatever happens, it's, it's not the end of the world. And there are always different paths you can take and different choices. It's not often that things go to plan. And so... There are, there are different ways of doing things. So just to try and stay as calm as they can. I think the most important thing, if you don't get the results that you want, or if you get better results, is to talk to people. Try and talk to your family, talk to your friends, contact your school. They'll be very happy to talk to you, your teachers. And just sharing it with somebody and finding positive ways forward and other, because they are out there, there's plenty of different options. Just making sure you're talking to people so you're coming up with a positive plan and way forward. So what would you say is like the plan of action? Is that start with talking to someone and then... Yep, so I would think go to your school would be a good way. Talk to them. Contact whoever it is that you've applied to. So whether it's a college, whether it's your school, whether it's another school, contact them because they may well still be able to accept you. It doesn't mean that they're going to say, no, you can't come. It may be the case that you do need to look for a different path, but you need to find that out first. So by talking to the person that you've applied to with your, with your school support, I think is, is the first stage. They can then support you, the, the school can support you with looking at other options. And anywhere that you're looking at, whether it's a school or a college, they'll have a careers advisor or an advice and guidance team that you can come and speak to, and they'll talk you through the options. You'll be able to sit down and talk. And there's some cases as well where maybe you didn't get the results you needed for a particular course, but you can speak to someone for different options as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with college courses, for example, there are a range of different levels. Um, probably similar with some school courses. So whatever you've applied for, you don't need to worry too much. If you don't actually then get those grades, there will be another alternative that you can go on to. There'll be another course. So again, it's going into that training provider, that education provider that you've applied to, to discuss with them what the way forward is. And if it's not your first choice, what other choices are available? Kieran, you're a student experience officer at Ashford. I'm going to ask you, what advice would you give to someone if they were unsure about what to do next? So I think the best advice to give is that there is always an option. You're not without options. So even if you need that little bit of time to think over your options and speak to your family, speak to your friends, see what they say, yeah, just take your time with it. Make sure you come to the best decision that you can come to and try and stay as calm as possible. I think it's also important to stress as well that I think there's a lot of pressure to make a perfect decision and you have to decide what to do next and get it right and that's what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Whereas the beauty now about further and higher education is you can change. Like you could start a course and then a year through decide I'm actually going to change something else as well. So there is that flexibility. I'm going to ask Holly, what kind of flexibility is there when someone starts if they then decide, oh, actually, this isn't for me? So there's so much. If you start a course and it's not for you, then that is always something that you can change. Um, I know this is the case across a lot of like school sick forms as well, but I've run into lots of students this year who have said, like, I've been doing my course for a year, I'm not happy with it, and so I'm applying for a different one. And so you kind of do have that flexibility to move around. So please do not be stressed if you think you've made the wrong choice. So a big option for a lot of prospective students is to go to college. There's a lot of options there, apprenticeships, T-levels, A-levels, B-tech. And let's dive now into a little bit about what college is like, because it is very different from a traditional school experience. So first of all, I'm going to ask Holly, what is a college? 
college is further education for primarily 16 to 18 year olds but we have students like adult students where you can work on level I think we've got level one two and three qualifications there's loads of options generally at college you will focus on just one subject so if any of you are in sixth form are thinking about going to sixth form you'll know that you have to pick like three or four subjects but if there's one thing that you are really really interested in college can be really good for that because you can just pick one and run with it The hit list GCSE Surgery with East Kent Colleges Group. Find the course that's right for you at one of their Ofsted Outstanding Colleges. Kieran, following on from what Holly said, like usually if you're going to sixth form, you're picking four subjects. It's the traditional, you know, sciences, humanities, languages. But obviously college opens up this whole new universe of subjects what are some of those wider subjects that people can study at college so one of my personal favorites is music production i did music production at university so i regret not going to a college and doing music production but we also have stuff like engineering plumbing and electrical which is a really good way to get into one of those fields so there's some really cool subjects that we offer and is there a way if someone has it like an area of interest or maybe an idea of what they would like to do in the future what kind of support can they have to maybe find a course that is going to get them there so for example oh I really like live music I would love to run an audio desk at a concert music production is for you what kind of support is there for that first thing is to come to one of the open days and speak to the course providers and they can give you all the information on that specific course And once you make your decision, you get so much support from the staff around that course and staff all around the college to help you pursue your interests and what you want to do following on from college. And then for Rachel, what outside of the classroom or the educational avenue in college, depending on the route that you take, what other benefits are there for being in a college environment as opposed to like a traditional school environment? I think college is different in that it's a very mature environment. So we expect and we treat the learners, the students as adults. So they therefore have to take more responsibility for their own learning. So they develop that maturity and and gain those skills. They're in for about three days a week as opposed to five days a week at school. So they don't have things like supervised self-study. They're planning their own routines, really, and their own own study study sessions um, and keeping on top of their homework themselves. So developing those time management skills because of the time, extra time they have, a lot of them can get part-time jobs. So that also brings with it a lot, a lot of skills. And the work experience that, that we, we try and, and put all students on work experience to get placements, to get real live um, experience of the world of work. It looks great on their CV and they get to experience the industry that they're actually training for. So I think that, that sort of independence, that industry experience and the, the skills that they learn from those really develop them as a person. And obviously it's then quite a big transition to go from school, especially when you're 16, you're in all the time. It's an 8.30 to 3 p.m.-ish timetable. And that's obviously then a big adjustment to move to college. I'm going to ask Holly this question. What kind of support is there to help people make that transition? Okay, so... Both colleges and sixth forms will have a focus on making your experience as smooth as possible when you're starting. So I know that here we have like a huge focus on like your experience. We have a wellbeing team. A lot of different colleges will have this somewhere where you can go if you're struggling. There's also going to always be a bunch of events on where you can make friends. So at the start of each year, we have a freshers fair where you can turn up, you can meet people and you can like really get into college life. And what is uh, your favourite thing about being a student experience officer? I think I like when we've thrown a big event and all the students show up and it's really nice to just see everyone enjoying it. I think coming out of the lockdown, the first like big event that we threw, we had the big gladiator inflatable and it was just so wonderful to see all the students gather out laughing and having a really good time. I think that's the best part. So 
one thing about college as well which is quite similar to university if people decide to go to a levels and then go to university is a lot of colleges have a student union so um kieran i'm going to ask if you're not familiar with that term what is a student union so i think it's important to point out that as soon as you join the college you're automatically a member of the student union and within that student union we have a body of students who essentially act as the voice of the students which is led by our student president who is elected by the students and is that connect between the students and the senior leadership team. What's kind of like the day-to-day running of a student union? So it's obviously listening to the voices of students. What's the next step for that? How do they enact change? So we have regular meetings with the student union and the student union are very good at, you know, talking in these meetings, um, discussing different points and this will just be rounded up and brought to the SLT. So it's an ongoing thing throughout the year. There are very regular meetings. The students' voice are always being heard and actions are taken upon from what is coming from these meetings. So, yeah. I'm going to put Holly on the spot now. Can you think of an example of something that was changed in the past year that was brought to attention by the student union? Okay, so um, just off the top of my head, um, this year we had our first student prom, which has been like one of the biggest requests for the last couple of years. Obviously, the students that came through this year maybe didn't get to have a prom at their at their school when they left. And so we took that feedback on board and that's one of like the big events that we've we've thrown. So not only can you just get involved in your next level of education, but you can also help shape that as well. So it's quite nice to get involved with the student union. I'm going to ask what types of events and activities you can get involved in because I know that you have societies in a student union as well. I'm going to ask this to Kieran. Okay, so obviously at the beginning of the year we have our big freshers fair which gives you a taste of what's going on in the college. It allows you to meet new people and then yeah, from there you can join societies. Uh, there's a range of different societies um, and you know even if you want to put forward that you want to start a society then that's great and then throughout the year we have many events and I haven't been in my position for a great amount of time but I already know that we had a big celebration of culture day which was massive we had loads of people come in from outside to put on performances we had a lot of food there from different cultures. It was amazing. And that was something that was put on mainly by our students' union. So that just shows the importance of the students' union. What's the roguest society you can think of? Oh, I'm not sure. I know there's, there's talks of a manga society wanting to start up. So, and that's something that I haven't really heard of before. So that would be really interesting to get to know. So Again, th- this happened last year when we did uh, GCC surgeries. It just made me really want to go to college because I used to be a weeb and I would have loved a manga society. Holly, what's the best event that you've put on as a student experience officer? Okay, so the best event is definitely our drag show. We've actually had two of them now. And at the last one, Numi was our guest of honour, which is very exciting. Um, so that's awesome. That came from feedback from our students that uh, we needed more events focused on the LGBTQ plus community. And I know that like drag is huge with the students right now. And so we hire a bunch of professional drag queens. We had Delilah Tickles come in this year to host it um, with Anita Wee. And it was, uh, it was absolutely fantastic, even bigger than last year. I think the whole thing was like, it was like over an hour and we had loads of students. So One of the things that I found quite profound as a queer person coming to this event was I would never have been to an event like that at my school and I thought it was amazing that it was organized by the college that so many students came as well and you had such a crowd of people as well it wasn't you know just people involved with the event you had people coming around as well and obviously college brings together a huge group and variety of people from different cultures from different backgrounds um, I'm going to ask Rachel a question. What is it like kind of facilitating that environment? Well, it's a great place to be for, for the staff and the students because of that diversity. 
and I think it's very much celebrated within the college with, with your events and other events we put on. It's just a fantastic place to be. We do focus on, on um, trying to be obviously very inclusive and events for all groups involved. We, put on, we do a lot of work with our asylum seeker and refugee students, first language events and cultural events, careers advice in first language and, and all sorts of things. So I think it's just, it's a really inspiring place to be, whether you're a student or whether you're a staff member, and just getting everybody involved, like the drag show. So many students from different walks of life and different areas were, were getting involved, and it just makes it a more inclusive place. Amazing. Thank you so much. Can we have a round of applause? Thanks for listening to the Hit List GCSE Surgery Podcast with East Kent Colleges Group from EKC Canterbury College. For more information, you can head to ekcgroup.ac.uk and you can find the rest of the episodes of this podcast series at im-listening.co.uk or wherever you get your podcasts. This has been an I Am Listening original podcast. For more information, head over to our website, im-listening.co.uk. Listening.